Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. Today we are going to cover the session on what is called probability plots. I believe you all of uh, have experienced it or have played with it and experimented with it uh, during the R sessions with Professor Guru Rajan on uh, descriptive statistics. But now the time has come to formally introduce it to you as to what these plots are and what different kinds of plots are available. So first let us review what we have done in the past. We introduced random variable as a real value function with a probability space as its domain. Then we introduce expectation of this random variable. And we also introduce certain special random variables which have a uh, specific models of distribution. So we introduce two kinds, one is a discrete distribution functions uh, in which we covered uh, Bernoulli trials, binomial distribution, geometric distribution, negative ge binomial distribution and hypergeometric distribution. While in the continuous distribution function, we introduced a uniform distribution function, uh, then uh, normal distribution function, then some derivatives of normal distribution such as chi-square, t distribution and f distribution. We also introduced uh, other distributions such as uh, uh, log normal distribution, Weibull distribution, exponential distribution. I must mention that there are plethora many 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 distributions available and many many new distributions are discovered in order to meet today's data requirement. But we have shown you a few of them which you come across more frequently and uh, which will be useful to you in your immediate engineering requirement, immediate materials data requirement. Of course as and when we move forward the new distributions that we may require in the further analysis will be introduced in details there. Now in all this uh, issue the question comes that uh, we say that a random sample has been drawn from a distribution or specific distribution. How do we know that it really comes from that distribution? The reality picture is something like this. You have a very large population which you are trying to study. For example, if you are studying the yield strength of a particular alloy which is produced in a factory, in a industry, then what, how are you going to guarantee that it is going to have this particular yield strength? Well, the method is that you will take a few samples, random samples, you will choose them randomly not as systematically and then uh, you will derive certain statistics and uh, you will derive uh, certain values and you would like to see if this uh, distribution and you would have assumed that well theoretically the yield strength should follow say log normal distribution or say normal distribution. Then the question remains is that does sample say that or not? This is the question we would like to answer in this session and this can be answered through what is known in statistics as goodness of fit tests. Goodness of fit tests are a very theoretical uh, derivation of comparing the data values, data uh, CDF with the assumed CDF. But in the, there is another method which is called a graphical method 
which does not give you a strong proof, but it gives you a confirmatory guideline that yes, it your our assumption that this particular sample comes from this distribution may be correct in this scenario. And this is what we would like to cover. We are not going to cover the theoretical goodness of fit tests in this course, but we would like to cover some of the graphical methods for confirmatory guidelines. We are going to consider primarily two such graphical methods. One is called probability plots or PP plots and the other is called a quantile plot which is known as QQ plots. Now, how do we go about doing this graphical comparison? We assume that data is coming is a sample from a particular distribution. Your data what you have got is a sample values coming from a particular assumed distribution. Hence naturally it means that whatever cumulative distribution function that you will obtain from data should match with the assumed distribution cumulative distribution function. Similarly, if they are coming the sample data is coming truly coming from the one particular assumed distribution, then the quantiles that we have calculated from the data should match with the theoretical quantiles that you would get from the assumed distribution. Such matching can be worked out in two ways. If you are plotting the data CDF versus distribution CDF, and if both are equal they should fall on a straight line. So, this is case 1. The other one is if data quantiles if you plot against the assumed distribution theoretical quantiles then they should also match and they should fall on the straight line x is equal to y this is case 2. So, here I have detailed described PP plot. CDF is calculated from the data and it is called an empirical CDF. Then another CDF is calculated from the assumed distribution and it is called a theoretical CDF. PP plot refers to plotting the empirical CDF on y axis and theoretical CDF on the x axis. If our assumption is true that the data is truly coming from the assumed distribution, then the points on this plot should fall approximately on y is equal to x line. Otherwise, we should be able to clearly see a mismatch. So, let us see the two plots. Now, in this plot what I have done is I have taken I have simulated standard normal variates uh, using random number generator. I have simulated about 100 of them and then I have calculated from that data the uh, cumulative distribution function. Let us do some recalling here. Cumulative distribution function of data is nothing but number of data or let us call it a f of x less than or equal to t is nothing but number of data points less than or equal to t divided by n which is total data points. Okay. So, this is called the empirical the empirical CDF. Okay. So, you calculate the empirical CDF and then from a standard normal distribution you have a CDF which you can call f of t again then it is nothing but integral minus infinity 2 t 1 over square root 2 pi exponential 
minus 1 half x square dx. So, this is called theoretical CDF. So, the values of this theoretical CDF on T is given here. This is the next axis which gives the theoretical CDF. This empirical CDF is plotted on the y axis and that is plotted in that is shown in here. So, if you take any typical value here, this says that theoretical CDF which is in here, this is your theoretical CDF value and this is your empirical CDF value. So, this is how all these points are plotted and now what we say is that if your assumed distribution is the correct distribution for the data that is your data truly comes from the standard normal distribution which in this case we know because we have generated it randomly. You can see that it should fall on the line this is y is equal to x line. So, it should fall approximately on y is equal to x line and you can see that these points are falling and therefore, it says that ok it confirms graphically that the data points seem to be coming from the standard normal distribution. Let us take the case of mismatch because sometimes we understand only when we see the matching, but more we understand if we see the mismatch. Now, here we go. Here I have generated a log normal data by random number generator. So, I have a log normal data generated log normal data generated from the normal from the random number generator and I am assuming that the data is actually coming from a viable distribution. I have generated the data. So, it means that I have a data from a population which actually has a distribution log normal while I have thought that I have actually drawn a sample from a viable distribution. I have very purposefully taken these two distributions together is because in the field of metallurgical uh, parameters or properties such as uh, strength property you take yield strength, you can take UTS, we can consider even the fracture toughness. There is always a question which distribution is closer and the two competitive distributions for all the strength of the strength property of the material is log normal and viable. So, here I have taken the log normal and viable distribution as two competitive distributions. So, I once again repeat what we have taken is we have taken a data actually from the log normal distribution, but I have assumed or I have believed that the data is coming from the viable distribution then this becomes my theoretical distribution and this becomes my empirical distribution. And I have plotted once again this shows the viable CDF and this shows the empirical log normal CDF that is it is only an empirical CDF it is not really log normal. I have originally drawn the data from log normal. So, please uh, uh, let us understand it clearly. This is a data this is coming the empirical means that it is coming from data, but for my understanding in this course I have generated this data from log normal CDF therefore, I am writing log normal otherwise it is a data. 
So, just as we did it in the previous case for data the empirical CDF is a ratio of number of data points less than or equal to t divided by total number of data ok. So, this is your empirical CDF for value t and then this is a Weibull CDF which I call the this is calculated from the Weibull CDF distribution function and I call it a Weibull CDF. And now you see that if I draw this line which is x is equal to y, this is x is equal to y or y is equal to x line, you see that the data is systematically falling above and falling below. There is no random behavior, I mean there, there is, it, it is not an error difference as it happened in the previous case. The data is systematically going above and then systematically going down and therefore we understand that there is a mismatch with your empirical uh, CDF and your assumed CDF. Your assumed CDF is far away from what your data says and remember data is what we believe, data is what we believe. Now let us uh, understand the QQ plot. Here again like CDF we take the quantiles of empirical distribution and we plot it against the quantiles of theoretical distributions ok. Uh, you please recall what is quantile. You have understood the quantile in terms of quartile ok. We are talking about quantiles, we have come across the definition of quartiles. Quart quartiles is such that first quartile Q1 is such that probability of data x less than or equal to Q1 is 0 0.25. Quartile 2 is such that probability of x less than or equal to q2 is half and q3 is a third quartile where probability of x less than or equal to q3 is 0 0.75. So, if you want to divide the data into 4 equal parts your data is here. If you want to divide the data into 4 equal parts such that the probability from negative infinity to q1, q1 to q2, q2 to q3 and q3 onwards are all equal. These are all equal probability and they are all one fourth. This is what is called quartile and if you recall this is also known as median. Quantile is a general term. So, if you wish to have this probabilities your uh, data be divided into say 5 equal parts then you will have if you want to divide it into 5 equal parts then you will have each of this there are 6 parts here right. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, each one will have a probability 1 sixth. So, you will have a 5 values which I call P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Then my this will be called pentile. So, if I take a first pentile P1 is such that probability that x is less than or equal to P1 is 1 over 6 and like, likewise P2 is such that probability of x less than or equal to P2 is 
1 third or 2 over 6 likewise you can define. So, quantile is a general term if you want to consider the case of dividing the data into 4 equal probabilities you will have quartiles. If you want to sorry these are not pentiles these are hexiles. If you want to divide it into 6 equal part it will have a 5 points uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 which will divide each data into 1 sixth they are called hexiles. You can have deciles, you can have centeniles etc. etc. I mean you have 90 percent data here and there you mean there are various ways of doing it. So, in this way you can define a quantiles. In the example which I am going to show that there is a matching and there is a mismatch, I am going to consider deciles. I am going to consider deciles. It means that the data will be divided into 10 equal probability parts where each part will have a probability of 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 1 over 10. And when I define like this, you remember it is a cumulative probability that I am defining. So, I am defining all the values here below this and therefore it becomes 2 times 1 over 6 ok. So, let us uh, see the plots now. So, if you look at the plot again I have taken the same uh, standard normal uh, variates generate data generated by using random number generator and I have calculated their deciles. So, there are one sorry there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 points. Remember if it is a decile you are bringing it into 10 parts there will be 9 quantiles, 9 deciles ok. And these 9 deciles I have plotted if you take any typical one. Uh, oh. okay. If you take any typical one this shows the data decile or as I have called it empirical quantiles and this is theoretical quantile calculated from normal 0 1 and I have plotted each value and you can see that there is a way deviation I have made the points very big but otherwise you can look at the center of these points and you know that they are little above on the line or little below etc. because I am actually taking a random uh, number generated uh, standard normal uh, random generator using uh, using random generator to uh, generate the standard normal distribution. Now, if you look at the mismatch again I have done the same thing. I have taken the log normal distribution to generate random variables of log normal. In other words, I have used a random number generator and generated log normal uh, random variables and I calculated quantiles and I am thinking that they have all come from viable distribution and I am comparing them. So, I am doing little bit of an artificial thing, but this is to drive the point home I am following this. Uh, random number generated values here. So, this is once again empirical deciles and these are viable deciles, these are also deciles. There are exactly 10 if you look at it there are 10 uh, 9 data points 3 and 3 is 6 and this 3 9. And you can see that very systematically it diverts away from the 
line which is x is equal to y. And therefore, it says that what you have assumed your data coming from is not the case, your data is coming from some other distribution than the assumed distribution of y bull. Once again I repeat that here we are comparing the empirical deciles with the y bull deciles, this is calculated from data. So, if I call d1 as the first decile then d1 is such that probability of data x is less than or equal to d1 is 0 0.1, d2 that is this is d1 point, this is d2, then this d2 is such that probability that x is less than or equal to d2 is 0 0.2 and likewise. Hmm. So, this is d1, this is d2 like this I have calculated. The interesting part here is that in the previous case we were matching probability with probability, here we are matching the data value with the data value. So, this is something uh, strikingly different in this case. There are other plots, same plots are made in a different way. For example, instead of considering your x axis, instead of considering your x axis as the actual quantiles or actual CDF and y axis also as CDF, it says that you take y axis, uh, x axis as uh, the data values. So, x axis becomes the data values. and y axis is taken as a theoretical probability scale. There are when there were the computers were not so common when we studied statistics, there used to be normal probability scale paper available in the market and viable probability scale paper available in market. Now, you do not need as you have done it in the R exercise, you can very easily give a command as to what should be your y axis, what theoretical probability scale you want and then it plots the data values against the theoretical probability value and again the matching has to be at x is equal to y. So, x is in the usual numeric scale showing the data, probability values are plotted against the value of random variables that it takes and here also it falls on a y is equal to x line. So, the exercise that you have might have done in the descriptive statistics uh, R sessions uh, are largely using the probability scale as one of the y, as y axis and x as a data axis. So, uh, let us summarize what we discussed today. We talked about graphical methods to check if the distributional assumptions made on the data are matching or not matching. If you plot an empirical CDF against the theoretical CDF, it is called a PP plot. If you plot a data quantiles against the theoretical quantiles, then it is called a QQ plot. The same comparison can be made by plotting empirical CDF on the, uh, you can plot the empirical CDF using a probability plot papers. And this probability papers, I do not know if the market anymore sells it, but at least you can have it easily on any software package that does the statistical analysis. In particular, R has this facility. In all the above case, uh, cases, it is a matching if it matches x is equal to y line. If there is a mismatch, then that is called a 
indicate a mismatch with your assumption and where the data comes from. Thank you.